Hello and a very good evening. First tonight, the remarkable story of a cyclist who was run over by a lorry and survived. Bart Chan suffered serious injuries and is still in hospital. He's speaking out now because he wants much more to be done and more quickly to stop the cycling deaths by HGVs on the capital's roads, calling the mayor's cycling revolution empty words. He spoke exclusively to our transport correspondent, Tom Edwards. Helpless under those wheels, um, felt like my body went limp basically, I was expecting the worst. It was kind of like slow motion almost, um, excruciating pain then followed. I was just amazed that I was still conscious coming out the other side of it. Bart Chan knows he's extremely lucky to be alive. On Tuesday night he says he was hit from behind by a lorry while cycling and run over. Got a shattered left uh, shoulder, or broke, ripped cartilage muscles around there, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. Uh, I've got bone deep gashes in my elbow and my knee. Um, I'm not sure about the other injuries yet, the full extent of the injuries haven't yet emerged. Uh, so I'll just have to wait and see what the doctors say. An experienced cyclist, he's speaking out as he wants quicker, urgent action to make the roads safer. Compulsory better design. So, I mean, you've got London buses, which are pretty well designed for the drivers. They can look around almost 360. Uh, they, they, I always see, see a bus driver. They can see me. It's fine. Why can't we have that for HGVs? Why can't we have segregation all over uh, central areas, particularly where there's built up areas with um, pedestrians as well? And uh, why not ban HGVs at rush hours as well, like in, in Paris? The collision happened here on Upper Thames Street. The same evening, another cyclist died at Elephant and Castle. Again, it involved an HGV. This year so far, five cyclists have died. Two involved lorries. We've had cycle super highways, but and we've had people promise money and change, and our infrastructure change takes time, but there's no tangible change. I think if you'd speak to all the cyclists who are on the roads, nothing really is changing. I, th I think the road space is still a very dangerous place. It's not happening fast enough because there's, there's still deaths going on, still serious injuries. Um, as soon as it stops happening, and then, then you can say maybe it's, it's been completely completed, but right now he, the, the mayor, I think, talks about a cycling revolution. I'm yet to see that uh, revolution take place. Uh, I feel it's kind of empty words right now from Boris Johnson. City Hall says it's lobbying to change the rules on lorry cabs and is tightening the safety equipment lorries have to use, and it's spending millions on cycling infrastructure. It says there are no shortcuts, though, and it wants the improvements to be done properly. There's no doubt there is frustration from cyclists at the lack of visible progress, and tomorrow there will be a big demonstration from them. The last time we had one on such a scale, it was aimed at the mayoral candidates. Tomorrow, it'll be aimed at the local council elections. Bart now faces a long period of rehabilitation, and at the moment, he doesn't know how much his injuries will change his life. He doesn't want anyone else, though, to go through the same thing as he's going through now. Tom Edwards speaking to Bart Chan there. And uh, Tom, what do campaigners say about the pace of change to safety improvements? Well, the point is, apart from the segregated bit up at Stratford, the CS2 up there, we haven't seen any big changes to road infrastructure in London, and that means the issues are still there. Cycling has become very, very popular, but the infrastructure, not a lot of it there, is in place at the moment. That means uh, the issues are all the same, and we have this policy gap. Now, City Hall have put out a statement. They say there's no magic wand. We want to do it properly. That's the issue. We're in this long waiting period now while they deliver. OK, Tom, thank you. Our transport correspondent, Tom Edwards.